Hey, this is Aiden and welcome. In this video, I would like to showcase one video out of my latest design course, which is available on ArtStation and Gumroad. We're talking about the Gura Space Rover design course. I want you guys to get an idea of what you can expect and what kind of content will be in the course. In this particular video, we are talking about how to design the suspension of the Space Rover and you get an idea of uh, my thought process and how I design things and how I make decisions and why. I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, you'll get some more information about the course at the end of it. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy. Thanks. Hi. In this uh, video, we are covering designing the suspension. So now that we have the chassis, the base, the most important thing of everything, we can now uh, extrude out of the chassis and work on its the limbs and the, the extra elements that attach to the heart of the vehicle, which is the chassis. So in here, I am um, designing the, the main pivot, the main kind of block that uh, the leg will attach to and um, giving it a couple of details to make sure that everything looks good. So, beveling everything, of course. Um, and here I am contemplating if I build from the block out directly or if I, um, if, if I model one from scratch and I decide to pull it, pull it aside and uh, design my own based on the parameters I set on the uh, block out, roughly following uh, its proportions and using the polyline tool here to uh, draw out the leg and playing with the, with the points and the dots and pulling them around a little bit to define the desired shape, which I find to be roughly this. And I'm already applying some bevels here, so you can take another shot and get wasted. And here comes the extrusion and creating of the, 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 the complex transition from uh, left to right which gives it like this insectoid uh, vibe, you know, with the legs connecting to the thorax, um, which I love, absolutely. And then the hardest part is converting these sharp edges to uh, a nice, soft, nicely modeled body, um, which is difficult, to be honest. So I have to do some extra cutting with planes to really eliminate this squarish uh, form. So that is by doing this and moving it on the right axis and plane and then cut it with a boolean. And uh, this is already starting to feel like a much better base uh, that I'm happy with. So now comes like the beveling and making the, the whole leg uh, soft. And that is basically the main section of this uh, creation. So the suspension arm isn't really like the, the most difficult uh, part. It is one like at least to have a good setup so that you can create a, a nice and aesthetic uh, shape, which looks uh, nice and soft. And um, yeah, now I turned the chassis back on to see how it looks like on the body and creating uh, some booleans to um, kind of communicate some attachment points and cavities and I'm uh, copying it to see it like how does it look on the body how do the other four legs look like and how will it have effect on the whole aesthetic on that insectoid like uh, body shape which I absolutely love by the way it's a really buggy uh, <laughs> design which I like making sure everything is snapped right and mirroring it to the other side and uh, just like taking it in really observing how it looks like also with the wheels um, see how how what the ground clearance is and if the wheels pass each other or not and if the suspension is capable of working these are all very important steps to tackle very close and see if they work properly so that is what I'm doing
and I think it's a good setup for a, a good base. So, so now that we've uh, created the basic shape of the leg, we can now focus on giving it the detail it deserves, making it um, a little less bland, making uh, it a bit more lighter. And you can see that in this segment, I'll be doing a lot of cutting, uh, reducing mass, stiffening it with these special cuts with trusses, and really making sure that they're placed properly and proportionally and beveling everything to the nice in, in, in a good proportional radius, which is so important if you want to make uh, something look good. Uh, so that's what I'm doing and uh, beveling more and uh, also deciding very strategically what the order of beveling is, uh, which I think is important. So um, that is what I'm doing here. It's pretty straightforward using um oh yeah here i'm clearing up a little error so basically re-networking everything and joining it together so that it's a solid you always want to check after an operation what the state is of the object and you want it to be a solid because that means it's watertight and uh, waterproof and it's a it's a it's a sound model so i love this cutout in the front because it, it kind of removes so much weight and it really uh eliminates this boxy feeling of the legs uh, which I like, and here I'm, uh, I created offset curves, and now I'll create something very cool, it's like the skeletonized look, which removes a ton of mass from the thing, and um, the placement of the trusses is so important, you can completely screw that up uh, proportionally and position-wise, and here I'm cleaning up uh, some errors that I, that I found, just to make uh, the operation a bit better, so... Yeah, just deleting that thing altogether. And they're pretty thin, but uh, trust me, they'll look really good in the end. So here I'm trying to create like some zigzagging shape to make uh, it look powerful and, and uh, stiff and uh, and really engineered properly. So, and then I'm using the pivot point as a center point, which everything can branch off of. Um, and I love that aesthetic, so that's what I'll be uh, committing to. And, here I'm cutting them away one for, one by one to uh, decrease clutter. Um, yeah, I just love the, the result there. I just love how that looks. And now comes the fun part. We're going to bevel again. And um, as I said before, creating the bevels um, specifically to the shape of the curve is so important because everything needs to be proportional. Everything needs to be done with love and care. Uh, every corner deserves a good bevel, man, and uh, you should apply that in all your personal 3D and client work um, because, you know, it, it does make the difference, to be honest, and here I am making sure that the depth of the Boolean is proper, and they go in pretty deep because I want it to be like a pretty good cut, and you can see just how, see how good that looks, and uh, applying a bevel to everything, obviously, because the bevels will, will make it look so much better in a render. They catch the light and they really um, pop the the design, in my opinion. So uh, I uh, it's a joy to, to apply them. I'm waiting for the uh, operation to clear. Hell yeah. A look at that, mirroring it, checking how it looks like. Pretty satisfied with the result. And you can see the timer, it's uh it's like uh twelve forty AM. So it's gonna be like an all nighter for me, but it's gonna be um some good content for you guys, so uh, I'm happy to do that. So doing this on the repeating the process of the lightning cuts on the top side also trying to apply them in a good and logical way i even end up like removing one uh truss because i felt it was a bit too much i felt it wasn't needed so you eventually you'll even see me removing one uh near the top side where they converge uh because i wasn't satisfied yeah, that just looked too much to me. 
So I removed those two and this felt much better. Hence the decision and uh, obviously the the filleting. Hell yeah. Let's see how that looks like. I know how it looks like, but I want you to see it. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just really satisfied with that with that uh, particular uh, Boolean, a very successful operation. And um, it'll be a joy to look at next time, you know, whenever you render it and you can remind yourself, like, hmm, Aiden told me to spend some good time on those fillets, and they make everything look amazing. So definitely, um, if you have to take away anything from this course other than design, it's uh, how to fillet and how to bevel, how to be the fillet king. So, I'm adding some extra detail on the top arc. Um, I felt it could use like some extrusion to make it a, a bit more beefy and also like bump resistant, for example. Like, um, who, who knows the amount of stress that that joint needs to be able to handle. Um, so I wanted to reinforce that area a little more, apply a bevel, and uh, really make it look nice and smooth and extra strong and just break up that clean surface, that flat surface, which uh, otherwise would be a little bit boring. So I'm happy to place that detail there. And here I'm already making some uh, preparational operations for the uh, suspension swivel for the front wheels and making sure everything looks nice and that it has uh, space to be pivoted around. Just some um, preparative uh, preparation work. Yeah, that's going to be an area... It's going to be a problem because obviously it's tapered, so it doesn't allow for a, for a fat cylinder like that to go all the way through. But we'll have a solution in the end. Don't worry. Here I'm experimenting a little bit um, with how I want the joint to look like. Hmm. And it's it's a re recurring theme all over because you'll keep seeing me zooming out all the time to really turn around the whole thing, observe it and take in what I'm seeing to observe and to really scan for things and to see how it looks like in its entirety, uh, which is super important because you need you cannot lose perspective on the whole thing because it's so easy to get lost in a little detail, but you have to know how the bigger picture looks like so it's a constant battle and here I'm contemplating uh, what to do really checking it out seeing if I like things looking for angles how does it look good where doesn't it look good what can I do about it etc etc so I decided to make uh, some extra details on the pivot. I could have left it empty, to be honest, but I think that wouldn't, would not have looked good. I think it's good to emphasize uh, pivots and where they are because they can also have a material separation, uh, which in turn makes the design a bit more uh, exciting and, and uh, rich in terms of detail. So I would highly suggest doing that and applying some little screw details there and uh, maybe even like some directional details uh, where you can array them, I don't know, create some motion, you know, create some uh, forward motion with that, it's, it's, it's more dynamic, I feel, uh, so I like that. So here I'm focusing on another lightning cut to remove some mass from that uh, empty, very flat outer plane, but I don't want to make all of these uh, trusses again because I feel like it will be uh, overkill. So instead, I'm going for a more minimal approach, just making a, a little uh, frame indentation um, that also can give it like a really cool look, especially if beveled properly. And yeah, look at that. I, I kind of like that look. It's a very clean yet functional looking arm uh, that has like all of its integrities and all the lightning 
done on the inside, which is um, the most vulnerable of the leg. So obviously we don't want to have such complexities on the outside, hence the uh, decision. And here's just a little uh, circular detail I felt like uh, placing. Placing some uh, little tool marks like on the chassis but now on this uh, plane. And you can see that this is angled so what do I do? I'll make a C plane which uh, repositions the plane to the face you're working on so you can easily go in an orthographic view and perform the operations and uh, this saves so much time and hassle and I love that feature so definitely a good one to use and have in your uh, tool uh, in your toolbox and also actually use it because you know you may know of the tool but actually applying it uh, when you need it and um, really saves you a lot of time so I highly recommend that um, so yeah yeah here is like another mirror because I want to check out like hey does this design work uh, copied six times you know um, it, it could be like too much noise it could be too much detail so you want to check constantly how does how, not only how one little element uh, looks like in close-up but also how does the whole thing look like in combination uh, in its entirety because that changes the game you know if this looked like a overly detailed noisy uh, leg it could have been too much and we don't want too much. Eventually I decided not to go with uh, with the uh, air suspension because I felt like it cluttered up too much and I was like hey man we don't need suspension we got these advanced servo motors inside they gonna like regulate everything so and maybe it's internal you know maybe it doesn't need this external um, old technology uh, suspension so I decided to leave it out to be honest I'm much happier with the end result because it looks way cleaner and more advanced um, putting like a huge ass suspension on the legs kinda like dated back already to more current day times and I really want it to be modern and next gen so to speak so I was really happy uh, doing that and that is um, the reason behind the removal of the suspension now it's time for that wheel hub that pivot point um, but first I'm creating the actual disc or like the 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 frame which the wheel is being attached to and uh, this is quite a complex piece and I actually love how it turned out um, I was looking at some real life reference in uh, my spare time and uh, I always remembered this piece and uh, it's a good chance to apply it myself for this project so enjoy the process of it. It's kind of cool how these chunks of metal are being machined to remove so much material to then have like so little left but with the same strength so you can make something so much so much more lighter and also uh, stiffer uh, less mass you can relocate the center of mass by uh, making these cuts so I think it's just really cool what you can do by you know using that technology um, of removing materials etc absolutely love it and here is quite the uh, curve fest which I have to see through making all of these cut operations so uh, that's definitely something I had to be uh, careful for not to mess something up with the curves because it gets really messy with the curves and I'm happy that uh, it went okay-ish um, but I recall when doing this I was kind of uh, annoyed with uh, the speed of which I was making the shape because it shouldn't be too complex but again like the clutter just makes everything so much uh, so easy to screw up hence uh, you know the the extra careful uh, approach so nothing is finished with a good bevel I would say and um, applying them here as well you guys know me making sure that everything looks uh, perfect and, and soft and machined to a high degree of finish 
as this vehicle needs to showcase, you know, we're designing a high quality rover design. It needs to be done properly and not, not by some cheap manufacturer who, who is cutting corners, quite literally. So we got to do the extra work. Yeah, I decreased the size of these uh, uh, circles because I knew that I was applying a, a chamfer. So had I not decreased them in size, the chamfer would have been very small, which would have looked bad. So that's why I uh, reduced the size. And here you can see the end result. Absolutely love the complexity of that thing, how it's all like coming to the center um, with these trusses uh, placed in a cool way. So a credit to the engineers who did the real thing on the vehicle. And I'm simply stealing this uh, this design, which is a functional design because it worked, because it it's a real life reference. So now that I did this piece, it kind of gave me a good guide of how big everything should be around the hub. It gives me like an attachment points because we're not designing the wheel yet. So that's why I wanted to create something that is uh, related to the wheel in such a way that allows me to make good judgment on scale and details whenever I'm working on that in that area, which uh, we're about to do. So just wanted to explain what the reasoning was for creating this uh, plate out of nowhere when we're working on the suspension. It's just really important to make that hub design and actually know like what you're making it for, what's getting attached to it, you know, so I felt that was important to address. Here I'm creating some compl uh, some complexity and removing some width. It was uh, way too fat. And uh, here I'm finalize finalizing the, I don't even know how you would call it, like an interface, the wheel interface, the hub, the wheel hub, the wheel plate, something like that. Make it look uh, a bit more finished, more proper and uh, bevel everything and this will look amazing if we apply like a steel to it like a like an aluminum whatever the material may be and render it in key shot and you can see all those chambers and the machining and I just love that you know it's it's putting in the work now for having the gratification and key shot later uh, which is worth it to me so so we'll be doing some work here on the uh, connector arm on the steering column and uh, I think we'll do the majority of the work um, in the wheel design video which comes after this uh, just so you know just an uh, FYI and um, I'm scanning to see how it looks like making the cuts to make the uh, movement possible nothing Nothing is able to uh, clip or um, no mesh is able to intersect with another. I want the clearances to be proper and realistic so everything looks believable enough, you know? It, it is based in some, in reality, um, which I think is super important. So this will be the, the rough shape outline for this uh, hub, um which will be worked on in the next video for the majority, I believe. So, self explanatory beveling or filleting, which makes everything look much more better. Boom. Adding some details, end up deleting it because I didn't feel like it. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for this video. Um, come back to the next video where we will design the actual wheel and the hub. So I see you there.
Hey, I hope you enjoyed that free chapter from my Space Rover design course. If you enjoyed it and would like to see how the whole course is designed from scratch to finish to a high degree of detail level, check out ArtStation or Gumroad and purchase your course there. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will reply to them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.